Excuse me, little dog. Hi, guys. It's a lovely Sunday night here in the collapse of global industrial civilization. Did I say the collapse of global industrial civilization? It is Sunday night, January 7th, 2024, and I am exhausted. So this is going to be a short but sweet one. Uh, we're just going to look at a few from the mainstream media here tonight. So we're going to start out with a pop quiz. <clears throat> it is a pop quiz uh, from the LA Times. California mountain lion population is thousands fewer than previously thought. Mm -hmm. We have our previously thought uh, Scientists have completed their first comprehensive estimate of mountain lions, blah, blah, blah. So anyway, for the past like 10 years or so that these biologists have just been saying there's around 6,000 mountain lions in, uh, in, in California, but nobody really knew where that figure came from. So they did all of these big studies, all of these biologists and camera traps and all of this shit, and there are not 6,000. There are the total number of mountain lions is now estimated to be between 3,200 and 4,500, which is thousands fewer cats than previously thought. Uh, and then they break down about the GPS collar data and genetic tracking, blah, blah, blah. So, uh, there's, you know, there's a little bit, you know, 3,200 and 4,500, they're, they're working on that, that's somewhere in, uh, in the mix, uh, where was it, uh, good lord, in here, the pop quiz, is okay the scientists while they're trying to narrow that down number scientists do agree on one thing there is one thing that uh mountain lion biologists in the state of california this is a one word answer <clears throat> blank blank is the greatest threat to mountain lions in California. Okay. <laughs> we have a one word answer. Blank is the greatest threat to mountain lions. Okay, guys. This is a real tough pop quiz. I will give you a hint. The word begins with the letter H. So uh, our, our, our little Apple of the day student. Aaron, would you tell us what is the biggest threat to uh, mountain lions in the state of California? Humans! Very good. All right, that was a real brain teaser. They already agree on one thing, humans. The greatest threat to mountain lions in California and you could say the greatest thing about lions in Kenya or tigers in India or jaguars in Brazil. It has the same answer. All right. Enough of our pop quiz. Anybody, uh, again, if, if you got that answer wrong, obviously I've been having a failure to communicate here on Collapse Chronicles. What else do we have? Uh, okay. Extreme heat. This is another pop quiz. Okay, this is this is a kind of pop quiz day from CNN. Extreme heat is pushing India to the brink of survivability. One obvious solution. One obvious solution is also a big part of the problem. 
what is the obvious solution that is a big part of the problem. When blistering extreme heat gripped India's capital this summer, Ramesh, Ramesh says he felt faint but had no option other than to keep on toiling under the burning sun to provide for his family. I'm only trying to feed my family. But the heat is becoming unbearable, the 34-year-old year bricklayer told CNN. But we do not have a choice. We have to work. Ramesh lives with his parents, his three brothers, his sister-in-law, and three children in a congested suburb in western Delhi uh, as temperatures topped 40 degrees Celsius, and otherwise that is 104 Fahrenheit, closing schools, damaging crops, and pressure on energy supplies. The heat was making his family sick too. Yes, Ramesh says he borrowed $35, nearly half of his monthly salary, to buy a second-hand blank for his home. A second-hand blank for his home. Uh, the, the, the father of three living in a hovel. I lost count of how many people were in this hovel. What did he spend half of his monthly salary on? If your answer was a secondhand air conditioner. Yes. <clears throat> By 2050, India will be among the first places where temperatures will cross survivability limits. And within that time frame, the demand for air conditioners in India is also expected to rise ninefold, ninefold, outpacing all other appliances. Ramesh's predicament encapsulates the paradox facing the world's most populous country of 1.4 billion people the hotter and wealthier India gets, the more Indians will use AC. And the more they use AC, the hotter the country will become. When will it be so hot that, uh, well, I guess, I guess if you keep keeping your pecker in your pants, it's cold, I guess. Well, I don't know. Maybe the Anyway, we won't go there. Okay. Now we're going to go from India to the moon. To the moon, where scientists think we have officially entered the lunar Anthropocene. Anybody who thought the Anthropocene was limited to this planet Researchers believe that a new epoch may have begun on the moon back in 1959 when humans first affected its surface. Dubbed the Lunar Anthropocene, the epoch has now seen over 100 spacecraft visit the moon and humans are becoming a dominant force and shaping the surface, it is yet to be seen how exactly growing human influence will shape our natural satellite. Well, 100 uh, since 19, I was born in 1959, 100 spacecraft that landed on the moon since the day I was born. I'm saying in within 10 years, 100 
Uh, spacecraft will be landing on the moon certainly every year. Uh, that there will be, a, uh, as we start to mine all of that green cheese on the moon, you know, that's going to power all of these uh, spaceships going back and forth. Is that big lunar green cheese mine that is uh, what the little greenies are counting on. But I just wanted to call your attention to this next one. Uh, I've done rants before down here. It, it is, I guess it's starting up now. Rolling Stone has done this long article, a 24-minute read, which I am going to entertain myself with. A fire in the river, big sugar, and black snow in the Everglades. And uh, this is a picture of Florida, what it looks like down there. I guess, I guess right now, th this is this apocalyptic image. It, it, it's not, uh, this is not the Amazon rainforest. Th this is like 45 minutes west of downtown Miami that in, in the year 2024 that it is still legal to do this. It, it completely outrageous uh, about how they're, about how they're, uh, how they burn those damn sugarcane fields. Uh, here's a guy, been there 70 years. Uh, in the 70 years I've been here, it's changed for the worse because they have opened more sugar mills. Hmm. Farmers grow more sugar cane, and there is more smoke. Hmm, it's that simple. Yes, of course, you're talking to someone. I don't know, I'm sure everything that I'm drinking. Uh, how many acres of this? You know, it's completely poisoned. Uh, uh, Lake Okeechobee, is, it, I mean, it, it is an open sewer. An absolute open sewer. Uh, Lake Okeechobee is, I mean, it's absolutely disgusting. Uh, would it ever say how many acres? Uh, anyway, uh, this is a long, uh, I won't get into it too much here, but if you want to find out, uh, it's all about jobs. Yes. Let's see. The Everglades accounted for more than 7.3 million metric tons of greenhouse gas emissions. 2023, the same amount as 1.6 million cars. There you go, and I guess they're just not going to tell us how many acres. Uh, there we go. All right. Uh, uh, maybe 200. Okay. One corporate U.S. sugar owns more than 245,000 acres in Florida. And Florida Crystals owns another 190,000, so that's 400, 435,000 acres of uh, sugar cane getting burned in Florida. 435,000 acres of, uh, and that, that's two companies. And, uh, we wonder why we're fucked. Anyway, guys, speaking of all of this delicious Florida sugar, I'm going to enjoy this margarita. Go read this article, and uh, I guess a new week begins tomorrow with a trip to the. Is this our third or fourth trip to the landfill? I guess two. I know it's at least a third. Anyway. 
back to the dump tomorrow. <clears throat> it's our third, our one single wide trail or three trips to the landfill. Well, that actually made a trip without you at a dump on that carpet. Oh yeah, count, yeah, yeah, that's yeah. Four. And that's four trips. Four trips to the landfill. Good God.